Welcome to The Truth, hosted by Mike and D. Fish. Whether you're a skeptic about the power of God, a person who needs a miracle in their life or body, a believer seeking inspiration, or someone standing at the crossroads of doubt and belief, this platform is for you. The Truth, a place that is a sanctuary for believers, a space for skeptics, and a haven for those seeking signs, wonders, miracles, and the truth. They know that we serve a miracle working God. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. You know, people be like, oh, but nobody laid hands on me. Nobody has to lay hands on you. It's not about someone laying hands on you. The power of God is in this room right now. The power of God is in your bodies right now. The anointing is here right now. And if you're believing for a touch from God, then just stretch out your faith and receive everything that God says is yours. Can you say hallelujah? Oh, we got the victory. I said, we got the victory. I'm telling you, it's time to tune out every circumstance in your life and say it's time to turn up the word of God. What I'm here to tell you is God does what's impossible. He does what the doctors can't do. He'll do what the lawyers can't do. He'll do what financial planners can't do. He'll do what counselors can't do. No, he's God all by himself. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, he's powerful. He's powerful. Woo. John 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, yet yeah, you may have tri tribulations and trials, distress, frustration, diseases, and sickness. But listen, be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Be undaunted. Why? I've overcome the world. I've deprived it of its power to harm you. I've conquered it for you. Come on. It is finished. It is finished. No matter what anybody's trying to tell you, no matter what the doctors told you, no matter what the devil says, we win. Come on. I said we win. We got the victory in Jesus' name. Just like Goliath, the head of the enemy, it's been cut off. Jesus took the keys of death. We received the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on, do you understand what that means? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. And with that spirit comes what? It comes the power of God. The power of God living on the inside of you. Come on. In ourselves, yeah, we're ordinary. But God wants us to be extraordinary in in the Holy Ghost. Today, he puts his super on our natural. Can you say amen? I said it's coming on you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? So when any of those attacks come, you stand up and you say, no, 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 devil. You're a loser. I'm of God. His power dwells in me and I have overcome. I'm one with him and in him, no sickness dwells. Come on, David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? who dares defy the armies of my God. The same God that delivered me from the paws of lions and bears is the same God that's going to deliver me from anything you put in my direction. I said anything you put in my direction. No, tell them you, today is your day of victory. Come on, hallelujah. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live we move and we exist. We're his offspring in him. Come on, it's a, it's a location. It's a spiritual location in him. That's our identity in him. That's who we are spiritually. We're seated with Christ. Hallelujah. You're seated with Christ. You're protected by angels. No one can take you out of God's hand. No demon can come and mess with you or stop your purpose. The devil does not have the power to stop you. He doesn't have the power. He's going to try to deceive you. He's going to try to discourage you. He's going to try to distract you. He's going to try to defeat you. He's a father of lies. That's who he is. But I got good news for you. Hey, real good news. He can't stop you. He can't. Why? Because <laughs> Jesus already defeated him. If you're in Christ right now, hallelujah, every single one of you, you got all authority. If someone's got all authority, that means somebody else ain't got none. Amen. He's got none. So, so if you're seeing that lie in your life, that means what? I'm, you're being deceived. You're being discouraged. You're being distracted. Listen, don't 
get distracted. How do you do that? By keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Word of God. I mean, the devil, he tries to trip people up, and they think this has to be some long, hard, drawn-out battle, right? So, no, they didn't go to the wall of Jericho and yell for six months. No, they yelled, and the walls came crashing down. Why? Because the power of God is what makes the difference. Come on, it's just about accessing the power of God. Access it, right? But, but there's people, there's things that hold people back, eh? The devil tells them a lie. It gets in their head, and they believe the lie. Don't believe the devil's lie. Don't believe it. God, God's not the one telling you you're not going to get anything. Amen? It's not God. God's the great I am. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. God's a God of today. We talked about that yesterday. Faith is now. Faith is now. You, Everybody here, you got a call on your life. God wants you to fulfill that call. And to do that, you need to be in health. You need to be in strength. You know, you, you, you got to get a hate for sickness. I mean, a hate. It, it, it's, it's a work of the devil. You got to hate it. People walk around and they, they adopt sicknesses like it's there. Right? Oh, yeah. oh, Brother Mike, let me tell you about my diabetes. No, it's not your diabetes. The devil gave it to you. Stop claiming it. You know, people, they claim the sickness, but it's from the devil. You need to send it back. All right, return to sender in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. We got to start loving what God loves, but we also got to start hating what God hates. Psalms 45, 7, you love justice and you hate evil. You hate wickedness. I hate sin. Why? Because sin separates people from God. I hate wrong doctrine. Why? Because preachers, <laughs> they're going to be held to a higher standard. You know, they're, they're going to be held accountable for all this garbage that's being preached all around the world. All this wrong doctrine. You know, the Bible says, let God be true, but every man be a liar. Paul, the apostle Paul, he said, if any man, even an angel, preach a different gospel, let him be cursed. Come on, that's Galatians 1.8. I didn't say that. He said it. He said that if any man, even an angel, preaches a different gospel, let him be cursed. Right? And what happens when, it, when, they're, when they're avoiding topics of the Bible, they're robbing people of the power of God. They're just robbing them. Ephesians 6.17. Embrace the power of salvation's full Deliverance. Listen to that. Full deliverance. Not just not just going to heaven. No, there's benefits here on earth. It says, and embrace the power of God. Salvation's full deliverance, like a helmet, to protect your thoughts from lies. Protect your thoughts from lies. And take the mighty razor sharp spirit word of the spoken word of God. Come on, full deliverance. Full deliverance. Psalms uh, 103. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Oh, bless the Lord with all my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who does what? Who forgives my sins. Who heals my sicknesses and diseases and delivers my life from destruction. There's benefits to serving God. People, you know, how many times you hear someone say, I don't serve God for what, for what, for what he can do for me. I think you're stupid if you say that. I definitely serve God for what he can can give me. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be going to heaven. If it was, if that scripture wasn't there, I wouldn't serve him. Amen. But no, he said it. That's a benefit. But and when you know these benefits, when you know who you are, and when it comes alive in you, you take that mighty razor sharp word of God. You take the holy, the power of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you, and you attack Him. Come on, Satan's got no right to lay on you what God laid on Jesus. I said no right. Religion will tell you, no, 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 no. You know what? You're not not worthy. Oh, you're not good enough. No, you need to be humble. You need to be patient. You got to be content with your fate. The best might be for others, but just not for you. No, come on. I break that spirit of religion off of anybody feeling like that right now. Broken in the mighty name of Jesus. He set you free. And I refuse to go back to the bondage of the past. Come on. Be set free. I declare and decree from this point on. Your desires become your reality in Jesus mighty name amen so be it come on that's right it's yours come on praise the Lord you're free to soar come on let your faith rise right for the good news it's called good news for a reason embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance what's that Mike 
good things, happy times, healthy living, big dreams, abundant success, contentment. Come on, that's your portion. Psalms 84, 11, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Psalms 37, 4, delight yourselves in him and he shall give you what? The desires of your heart. Philip <laughs> 1 6, for now he has begun a good work in you. What? He will complete it. I want to say this right now. If we are not getting what the Bible says is ours, the problem's not God. The problem's us. The problem is us. God's ways are perfect. So just be willing. That's not trying to beat you up. That's saying, you know what? Be willing to adjust and say, you know what, Lord? I'm ready to change. I'm ready to do what you want me to do. I, but, but you can't blame God. God's given you the key to walk free from the devil. But, you know, so many people, they just don't know that, right? My people perish for lack of knowledge. They perish. Healing school, that's what it is. It's revelation school. It's just revelation. Sickness, disease. Poverty. They don't belong to you the same way eternal hell doesn't belong to you. It's the same transaction. But again, you can't get what you don't know belongs to you. But that's not going to be any of you. Amen? No, you're going to know what belongs to you. I mean, if you don't know that healing is the children's bread, that it's part of the covenant, and that Jesus still heals today, you're going to perish. You're going to perish. If you don't know, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and his glory, then you're not going to be provided for, right? God wants to equip everybody tonight. He wants to strengthen you tonight. He wants to heal your bodies tonight. Come on, hallelujah. Can you shout amen? amen. Come on, hallelujah. Psalms 119, 107. I'm bruised and broken, overwhelmed by it all, but listen to this. Breathe life into me again by your living word. Come on, breathe life. And the word's alive. The word brings life into you. When you hear me say these scriptures and preach these scriptures, grab a hold of it with everything you got. I mean, I'm telling you, the word of God has got the power to take you from death to life. The power to transform you from the power of darkness into light. The, I mean, the, the, the key to healing is just having faith that Jesus meant everything he said he said. Amen? Everything he meant. God is what he says he is. You are what he says you are. God has what he says he has. You have what he says you have, right? God will do what he says he will do, and you can do what he said you can do. Come on, breathe life into me again by what? Your living word, the word. It's got power to heal your internal organs, power to heal your eyesight, right? Power to heal your bones, power to heal your broken heart. Come on, the word has power. It's got power. When I said this to someone earlier, when people who believe in God start believing God, the possibilities will be limitless. I said limitless. Come on. People, people just don't want to take the time. They just don't want to take the time. They want to find a prayer line. They want to know that they don't want to build their faith. They just want prayer. And God will heal someone, some people that way. But what happens when they leave? What happens when they walk out these doors? There'll be people here tomorrow. We'll lay hands on them. They'll get healed. But then they, they didn't come. They didn't get hot to get filled with the word of God. They didn't get come filled, filled afresh with the Holy Ghost. And they're not going to know what to do when he comes back. But that's not any of you. You're ready. You're ready. You're going to be like, devil. <laughs> How do you like those apples? Here I am. And the last time you touch me is the last time you're ever going to do it. There comes a point where Christians got to level up. You got to level up. For every single person who believes God's plan is clear, I will when you will. When you will. Come on, you're here. You're hungry. <laughs> He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So tonight, be rewarded. Come on, when someone works the word, they become a nightmare for the devil. Say, that's me. Hey, come on. You're a nightmare for the devil. When you come alive to the word of God, come on, no one can convince you out of it. There ain't no devil in hell. There ain't no pastor. There ain't no person in the world that can tell me God's not in the healing business anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. <laughs> no one can convince me of it. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Every single person here, you are headed to healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you say amen?
Come on, when you get a revelation that, that your job as a Christian isn't to let life beat you up and slap you around until you get to heaven. So many Christians walking around getting beat up, slapped around day after day. No, decide tonight, I'm grabbing a hold of the word. And when he comes, when he comes and he attacks, you say, no, bless God, I'm not letting this thing take me out. I'm taking whatever this is, I'm going to go find it in the word of God, and I'm going to apply it to my situation. Now, what am I saying? Take the word and fight back. Take the word and beat back. You take the word and by the word you work the word. Amen. Work it. I promise you, you'll defeat the enemy every time. How? Simply read the Bible to him. Read the Bible to him. Feed him Matthew for breakfast, Mark for lunch, Luke for dinner, and John for a late night snack. Come on, stuff it down his throat and he's got to flee. You got to speak the word. Speak the word. Hebrews 4.12. <laughs> For the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Two edges. What's that mean, Mike? Once by God makes it living. Once by you makes it active. We, we, we can't give the word of God life, but we can make the word of God active in our life. Come on, that's what's happening right now. The word of God is becoming active in your life. You're, you're starting to notice when those attacks are coming. You're starting to notice when those thoughts are coming. And you're using the word and it's becoming active in your situation. And it's cutting through all that garbage he tries to throw at you. Can you say amen? Amen. Come on, when it comes out of our lips, <laughs> it's mighty, it's powerful, it becomes two-edged when you speak it. It cuts through sickness, it cuts through mountains, it calls light out of darkness, it calls life out of death. Come on, the Bible says it, huh? the entrance of your word brings light, and light does what? It dispels darkness. Hallelujah. Let that come alive in you. Light dispels darkness. The word dispels sickness and disease. Today is the day of healing by the word of God. Today is the day of deliverance by the word of God. Today is the day of life. By the word of God. Come on, tonight, get selfish. Lord, I'm not leaving here the same way I came. Lord, make me alive through your word. Any discouragement the devil's put in you, let it go today. And today, any excuse that you're not going to receive tonight, let it go now. Let it go now. Come on, it takes faith. And I'm telling you, faith's not that difficult. People think overcomplicated. It's just making the decision to say, you know what? Yes, I believe. I believe the word of God. Come on, faith, you deciding to believe this word over any other evidence. I refuse to believe anything that contradicts the word of God. Come on, E.W. Kenyon. Faith is acting in the face of a contrary evidence. The senses say it can't be. Hallelujah. But faith shouts above all that turmoil and says, but it is. Come on, how many people have been in a situation where you say it can't be? It can't be. Come on, it comes. But no, but <laughs> you say no, but it is. It is in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, the devil. <laughs> he's predictable. Come on, he, does, he doesn't change. He's doing the same things today he's always done. It's predictable, but now you're starting to become aware of him. The devil, he tries to keep your eyes on the past, right? He'll bring it up. Oh, you did this back then. You did this. You're not worthy, you know? Next time he reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future, amen? Remind him, hey, remind him that he and all his demons are destined for evil eternal fire. Hallelujah. Come on, he'll leave you alone when you start talking to that. What, 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 what's he do? He tries to keep you rooted in, in your old identity. Oh, I'm just, I'm just not a very strong Christian. You know, I just struggle with this. I struggle with that. No. The only two things you need to know about the devil is he's a liar and he's a loser. Can you say amen? Come on. He has been defeated. It's done. It doesn't sound like that. Even in churches, you walk around, oh, how you doing? Oh, brother, you know, the struggle is real. No, that's garbage. I prophesy from this day forward, the struggle is over. Come on. I said the struggle is over. The word of God sets you free now in the mighty name of Jesus. Put that on your social media tomorrow. Hashtag the struggle is over. Can you say amen? Come on, Acts 26, 18, to open their eyes. That's what's happening right now. Your eyes are being opened, right? Turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan onto God. Listen, he's got power, right? He's got power over every unbeliever. 
every unbeliever, but when you got born again and you did, that's you. All Satan's power over you came to an end. Hallelujah. That includes the power of sickness. That includes the power of disease. You got to realize sickness has no legal right in my body. It doesn't know. I said it earlier. You got to have a hatred for things that come from the devil. Amen. Come on, hallelujah. Let's finish that verse 18. And that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that's in me. What sanctified mean? That means you've been washed clean. You're clean, you're holy, you're righteous, right? The Bible says he cleanses us of all unrighteousness. How? So even if you got a messed up past, yeah, I got a messed up past, but guess what? His mercies are new every morning. Come on, God, don't patch up your old life. He don't just make certain repairs on your old life. No, he gives you a new life through a new birth. He frees you from the guilt of the past and the fears of tomorrow. How many are happy about that? Come on, I'm happy about that. I praise him for that daily in Jesus' name. Come on, the devil, he just tries to lie to you. He, he says stuff like, oh, it's never going to get better. Oh, it's always been that way. You know what? It's probably only going to get worse. And I'm here to tell you that's just not true. The devil's defeated. You've been washed clean. What did it say? The Lord will restore you and restore your innocence. Come on, restored. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 1.10. He has delivered you. He is delivering you. And he will continue to deliver you in Jesus' name. I love that. That's, that's, that's uh, comforting in Jesus' name. Let's go to the beginning for a second. Adam. Given dominion. Adam was given dominion. Listen. Psalms 115.16. The heaven. Even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men, all right? God gave us the earth. He created it for us, okay? I want you to get this because it's, it's important for you to understand because a lot of people say, oh, well, God's in control. Well, God's in control. God said, God said that he's giving rulership to us, right? Genesis 1, Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will have dominion over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on earth, and the small animals that scurry around the ground. We were supposed to have dominion. It belongs to us. Listen, there wasn't going to be any death. We would have lived forever, right? In the beginning, we were created to be well, strong, pure, healthy, come on, in fellowship with God. But Adam, right, one job Adam, he sinned, right? And he took that dominion and he yielded it back. He gave it to the devil, right? So the Bible even says the devil now is what? The prince and the power of the air. The prince of the power of the air. So really, it's true statement to say the devil's in control instead of saying God's in control down here. Because listen, God's in control of some things. He's sovereign over when every single one of you were born, okay? He, he picked you. Hey, praise God. To be on this earth at this time. This, he, 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 he's in control over his plan. He knows when Jesus is coming back. He's sovereign over the age that's coming. But then there's individual sovereignty. And you got to grab this. That you choose. You choose what happens in your life. God, God gave us a choice. He gave us free will. That there can't be love without choice. Or we just be a bunch of robots running around. No, he gave us strength. You choose if you go to heaven, not God. You choose if you go to hell, not God. We decide the, the, the part we're going to play in God's story. But it, it, it's up to you. It's up to you to complete the call God has on your life. Amen. God's got a plan. And it's going to get done with or without you. But you got to decide what part am I I gonna play amen what part am i gonna play and i'm gonna and i'm gonna stick around romans five and six for a minute and listen anytime you're struggling with sin anytime you're struggling with sickness get into romans five get into romans six and pound it pound it meditate on it come on it's, a, it's an answer to a lot of questions romans five starting at verse 12 when adam sinned sin entered the world adam's sin brought death so death was spread to everyone for everyone sinned yes people sinned even before the law was given but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break verse 14 still everyone died Death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. So grab that. Death reigned. Right? Wages of sin is death. Death came the moment when Adam disobeyed God. That moment, because of that sin, they were driven out of the garden in Eden, forever separated from the Lord. Amen? So it was right then, that moment, that death and the consequences of death, disease, pain, 
sickness, lack. It started destroying God's creation, and it did. Every sense until Jesus. Amen? Say until Jesus. Until Jesus. Right? There's two types of death. There's physical death. And then there's spiritual death. Well, spiritual death, it's separation from God, right? Before Jesus came, anyone who died did not go to heaven. They didn't. Jesus said, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Come on, what's that mean? To suffer violence and take by force, what's it mean? It's what I'm trying to get you all to do. I'm grabbing a hold of this tonight. I don't care about anybody else here. My mind is made up. I'm fully convinced. Satan, I don't care what power you got because you got no power over me. Hey, I got the life of God in me. I got his explosive power flowing in and through me. I don't have to accommodate sin. I don't have to accommodate sickness. I don't have to accommodate depression or guilt in my life. I got a fire in my bones. And I just got to tell somebody, hey, my mind is made up. I'm going to heaven. And guess what, loser? I'm bringing my family with me. I'm telling my friends about Jesus. I'm telling every single person and I meet, they don't got to go to hell. They don't got to be sick another day in your life. What am I doing? Come on, the violent, take it by force. We can't be wimpy, passive, Christian bystanders. No, we're called to be the light, the salt, the yeast. Come on, they're all invasive ingredients, which means, you know what? I'm not on the defense. I'm on the offense. The kingdom of God is invading, and the gates of hell cannot withstand us. Come on. Why do you think when he gave us the armor? Hallelujah. He gave us a helmet. He gave us a breastplate. He gave us a waist and shoes. Hallelujah. He didn't give us nothing in our back, because God never intended you to run and flee from the devil. No. He told you to run straight at the devil. Resist him and watch him flee. The violent take it by force. Hey, you're going to heaven. You're deciding tonight I'm walking in health. You're deciding tonight I'm walking in joy unspeakable. You're deciding today I'm going to populate heaven and plunder hell everywhere I go. I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus from today for the rest of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you say hallelujah? Come on, hallelujah. Ooh, I'm going to heaven. Hey, am I coming with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Good news. Verse 14. Now Adam's a symbol, a representation of Christ who is yet to come. But there's a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of this one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God. Hallelujah. Even though we were guilty of many sins, how many is that? Come on, how many of you can agree with that? Come on, listen, I'm trying to tell you tonight, you were facing a death sentence with a verdict of guilty, right? But what did Jesus do? He came. He made that payment. He paid for us so we can have life. Come on, I call you a Quitted. You've been found not guilty in the mighty name of Jesus. If you can't praise the Lord for that, you're in trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. Go on, he endured our death sentence for us. Praise the Lord. Go on. God set us free. Through his blood, we were forgiven of our sins. And by his stripes, you were healed. Our salvation, our deliverance, our redemption from every work of Satan was accomplished by Jesus. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Come on. So, so what was reigning before, right? Death. Death, right? What's reigning now? Hey, it's called the good news for a reason. Verse 17, what's reigning now? For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule and reign over many. But here we go. Even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it. Say, that's me. All who receive it will live in triumph and reign in life over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Come on, the Amplified says, we reign as kings in life, enjoying our regal freedom. <laughs> What's reigning now? We do. We're reigning. Come on, we triumph and reign in life over sin and death. Grab that tonight. Death doesn't reign any longer. Sickness doesn't reign any longer. Disease doesn't reign. And those are the 
Depression doesn't reign any longer. Anxiety doesn't reign any longer. Fear doesn't reign any longer. That's why I get upset at churches that sing those garbage songs. Jesus, I know you can, but even if you don't, right? It's okay to not be okay. That's garbage. It's garbage. That don't sound like raining to me. Too many Christians singing garbage songs like that filled with unbelief. And then what happens? They hear those songs. They sound good, right? They sound close. They sound good. But no, they start believing those words and those songs instead of what the word of God says. Who reigns? I reign. Oh, this is a prideful preacher up here. No, I, I, I didn't say it. The Bible says it. The Bible, it's either so or it's not so. It's either truth or a lie. I believe it's the truth. How about you? Come on, the Bible says it. How verse 4, 4. Then my father taught me. Hey, he taught me. Never forget my words. If you do everything that I teach you, you will reign in life. <laughs> I reign in life by Christ Jesus. And guess what? So do you. Glory to God. Come on. Hey, I'm looking at royalty. Here we go. Let's, 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 push, it, let's push it a little further. Acts 3. Peter said at the temple gate, called beautiful, right? What did he say? He says, such as I have. <laughs> Rise up and walk. Come on. That statement right there will get me kicked out of 99.9% .9 of the churches in the world today, right? Oh, that's blasphemy. Who does he think he is? Listen, first of all, without Jesus, I'm nothing. But amen. John 15, 5 says, Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But guess what? I got good news. I'm not without Jesus. My Bible says he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. The Bible says it's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And guess what? Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. Hey, come on. Maybe we see a lot more miracles happening, right? Maybe we see a lot more people getting healed. Maybe we see a lot more people getting raised from the dead. If people knew who was living on the inside of them, who was living on Come on. God's plan for you is to rule and reign. Rule and reign over your circumstances. Rule and reign over sickness. Rule and reign over depression and addiction and poverty. Come on. Rule and reign over anything that would hinder you from the call that he's got on your life. Can you say amen? Come on, if I fail, it's not God's fault, amen? It's not, if I fail, it's not even the devil's fault. Why? Because it's my fault. Why? Because I've been given dominion, and I should be ruling and reigning, amen? Every one of you should be ruling and reigning. And if you're not, you ha we take this time, we get this word in us, we build up our spirit, and we start walking, ruling, and reigning from this day forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Let's keep reading. Verse 18. Whew. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. But Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and a brand new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will become righteous. God's law was given so all people could see just how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace who rules instead giving us right standing with God resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord again Adam made me a sinner but praise God right Jesus made me righteous being a sinner and being righteous they're the opposite you can't be both you can't be both, oh, I'm just a sinner. No, you're not. You were a sinner, but you've been saved. You got saved. You are righteous. My Bible says holy and without fault. Another translation says blameless. Come on, that's you in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. And then when you read sin and death here, you might as well read anything the doctor said you got. Amen? Anything. Why, why do you say that, Mike? Because the only reason there's any sickness on this earth is because sin and death reign. Amen? That's why it's here. Romans 6, 1. Well then, should we keep on sinning so God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. That's for the grace message, people. Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten when we were joined with Christ in baptism Say, that's me. Come on, we joined him in his death. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we too may live new lives. Come on, that goes back to 2 Corinthians 5. If
If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things have passed away. That change, it's a spiritual reality. Come on. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, you're only held back by yourself. The only limits that you have is the limits that you place on the Lord. He's, he's limitless. You aren't what they said you are. You're who God says you are. Uh, one more time, the Bible says, God says you're holy. He says you're righteous. And guess what? He says you're healed in the mighty name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4.18. We don't focus our attention on what's seen. We don't focus our attention on what's seen but unseen. Because why? What's seen? It's temporary. It's temporary. But the unseen realm is what? Eternal. It's eternal. We don't look at temporary things. We look at the unseen. The eternal, you know, you right now, whatever it is you're looking, you may be looking at a diagnosis of cancer, a diagnosis of high blood pressure. You may be saying to yourself, hey, what's wrong with my body? But no, but from tonight on, your attention is going to be on the eternal. It's going to be on the word of God. It's going to be on God's faithful. Your attention is going to be on the dead raising power that lives on the inside of you. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans 6, 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, and that the body of sin might be done away with. Listen to this. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Come on. Again, take the word sin here and replace it with sickness. We are no longer slaves to sickness. Verse 7. For he who died has been freed from sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's put the consequence of death there, right? A consequence of sin. He who is dead is free from sickness. He who is dead is free from disease. He who is dead is free from depression. He who is dead is free from shame and guilt and addiction. Come on. He who is dead is free from sin. Come on. Sin. It's a curse that came on Adam and it passed on to all of us. But listen, that, that's why it's being called born again. Born again. I'm no longer from that family tree of Adam. No, I'm born of God. So my body isn't told to do by the sin that was passed down from Adam, and neither is yours. No, my body is told to do by the life that's in my spirit right now. And guess what? You got the life of God in you. You got God's redeeming life on the inside. You got God's quickening life on the inside. I'm telling you right now, bodies are quickening now in the mighty name of the spirits are coming alive now. You've been freed from sin. You've been crucified with Christ. The old man, the old woman's been passed away. You're walking Walking in the newness of life. He that is dead is free from sin. Come on. He who is dead is free from sickness and disease. Verse 8. Have we died in Christ? We believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. One more time. Jesus came. He destroyed sin, sickness, and death. Sin and sickness has no power over you. And if that has no power over you, then you got power over sin and sickness. Do you believe that? Come on, verse 10. For the, for the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, here's another one. <laughs> Likewise, you also view yourselves. Another translation says, consider yourselves as dead and unresponsive to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right, people, they're, they're so preoccupied with their circumstance, so filled with it. They say things like, oh, what if this gets worse, you know? Oh, how am I going to make this better? What am I going to do, right? They spend most of their time thinking about negative things. No, tonight, start spending your time viewing yourself dead and unresponsive to sin. View yourself as dead and unresponsive to sickness. Come on. Sickness and disease is not my portion. I don't identify with it. It's not coming on me, and it's not coming on my family from this day. I have Come on. Just like dogs don't have feathers, Christians should not have sickness and disease. It's done. It's finished. Whew. Romans 6 verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so you would obey in its lust. Don't let sin and sickness rule over you. Don't let it control your life anymore. No, you got to fight sickness. Fight it. When sickness comes knocking at your door, it's like a temptation. Temptation knocks at your door, you fight it. You put up a fight. You say, no, Lord, you said if any temptation comes my way, there's always a way of escape. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for that way of escape. 
escape, and now I'm going to go. I'm going to stir myself up in the word. Stir yourself up in the spirit. Come on. People don't fight. They don't fight sickness enough. They just know. As soon as they get a symptom, right to the medicine cabinet. No. Make Jesus your first resort, and you can stop running to him as your last resort. Amen? Come on. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people, they like the pity they get. They, they like the attention they get, and they don't want change. I, I've had many one-on-ones. People got set free once we, we got down to that. Once they realized, wait, well, yeah, that's right. I'm used to this person coddling me, and I'm used to people uh, giving me this special attention here. When they let that go, they were instantly healed, instantly healed in the mighty name of Jesus. They like it. Too many people like it. I mean, people want to pray about everything. You don't have to pray about everything. Oh, God, please heal me. No, what's the word say? The word says death has no dominion over you. You got to fight. Just fight. Ephesians 6, right? Paul, he's talking about the armor of God that we're supposed to wear in combat with the devil. Listen, not once in this scripture does God say he's going to put that armor on you or that God's going to fight that for you. No, he says you be strong in the Lord. You put on the whole armor of God that you will be protected as you fight the evil strategies of the devil. And then he said, and having done all that, you stand. Come on, you stand and fight. You stand and resist the devil and he will flee. God gave you power. He gave you authority against the devil, against anything he tries to bring in your, in your life, right? He gave you the armor. He gave, but it's your responsibility, every one of you, to put that armor on. Stand up against him again. Resist the devil and he will flee. The armor, the weapons, they're at your disposal. Use them. Hey, God's there i promise you to back up his word he's there to back he's going to confirm every word with what signs wonders and miracles come on he's there but all that's useless that's all you unless you take your position of authority and use what he's given you can you say amen well you got the power and the authority to take the word of god the name of jesus and the power of the holy ghost and run that loser straight out of your affairs can you say amen Go on. Don't pray and ask God, God to fight Satan for you. No, stop asking God to do what he told you to do. You're the one with authority. That's you. There's not one person in here that has more authority than I do. You have authority. Every single, you got the same spirit that raised Jesus living in you. You have Jesus' authority. Take your responsibility. Speak directly to Satan himself and stand your ground. And I'll promise you by the word of God, he will flee. Can you say amen? Well, so, so many times, so many times when Christians get in a battle, right? They suffer a loss. What do they do? They run. They retreat. They go into flight mode instead of fight mode. Amen? They do. They get so wrapped up in their circumstances, they're, they're not even prepared for battle. You can't defeat a 24-7 devil being a part-time Christian. Amen? You can't do it, right? The devil's out to steal kill and destroy everything that belongs to you or everything that should belong to you but you were called to resist them you were called to use your authority and stand your ground well you were called you were called to guard what belongs to you guard him claim whatever he's taking god's a god of restoration i said he's a god of restoration his will is for you to recover everything that's been stolen from you and from this point forward to live in victory First, first Samuel, uh, David got back from the war. I shared this a lot. Hey, he returned from the camp hey, after war, and it was all burned up. They took all the kids. They took his, his wives, his, his children, everybody. And his own people wanted to kill him, right? So he went to the Lord. And here, First Samuel 30, verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? Here's what the Lord said. He said, no, sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. You know, you got to take the loss on this one. No, no, he said this, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. And what? Without fail, recover all. Come on, ask yourself right now, has the devil stolen your health? Has he stolen your sleep? Has he stolen your peace? Decide right now, I'm not camping out where I'm at. No, I'm not letting the devil rob me in one more day. Devil, you've come this far, but you're going no further. I'm not tolerating the devil in my life one more day. Instead, I'm going to fight. I'm going to take my health back. You're going to take your finances back. You're going to take your relationships back, your opportunity. Anything the devil has stolen, come on, it's being returned in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, remember, it's a fight. 
It's a fight, but it's a fight Jesus already won. His victory is your victory. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, give Jesus some praise. <laughs> you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. I love that. Hallelujah. Verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we're under the law under grace? Certainly not. Don't you know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are the one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Okay, again, it's the same with sickness. Sickness may come, and people obey to it. They yield to it right away. First thing they do, run to the doctor. First thing they do, get medication. Listen, when you start to feel those symptoms, stir yourself up. Press into the Spirit of God. Start attacking it with the Word. Don't be obedient to sickness. you got to decide, I'm not going to obey and care to sickness again. I'm not going to tell sickness what I can do. I'm not going to let sickness tell me what I can do and what I can't do. Amen? And then in verse 23, it wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So again, death is the wages of serving the devil. Listen, if you allow it, you're allowing the devil to pay you for serving him. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't take payments from someone I don't serve. Can you say amen? As a child of God, sickness is, is the devil trying to give you something that just don't belong to you. It don't belong. It's like getting a bill that don't have your name on it. Sickness ain't your bill. It's the sinner's bill. Jesus paid the price. Hebrews 2.14 because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. The son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Right? Again, we just said it. Jesus came to seek and save those that were lost. Right? He came to destroy the power of the devil. He had to die. Why? So he could go to hell. So he could take the keys of death and hell from the devil. Right? Up until 2,000 years ago, the devil carried around those keys right? of death and hell. But you got to know that Jesus went in, destroyed him, took all the power from him. Right? Revelations 1.17. When I saw him, <laughs> I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one. I died. But look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Those keys our power and authority you don't have to put up with sickness and disease you don't have to put up with anything that's not wholeness the miracle working power of God is your portion come on and these two scriptures right here are going to sum this up for you Colossians 2 verse 11 we'll start in through our union, listen to this, through our union with him we have experienced circumcision of heart. All the guilt and power of sin has been cut away. It's now extinct because of what Christ the anointed one has accomplished for us. For we've been buried with him into death. Our baptism into death also means we were raised up with him when we believed in God's resurrection power. The power that raised him from death's realm. Listen to this, the realm of death describes our former state. Say former state. Come on, for we were held in sin's grasp, but now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return again, for we are forever alive and forgiven of all our sins. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record. The old arrest warrant that stood to indict us, he erased it all. Our sins, our stained soul, he deleted it all, and they can never be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed on his cross, nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Come on. Cancel. Let it go. All guilt, all shame of your past. Let it go. He's canceled. His sickness and disease no longer has a grip on you. And finally, verse 15. Jesus, what did he do? He made a public spectacle of all the powers. Of, you know, people have pictures with Jesus arm wrestling Satan. There's no arm wrestling match. No, here's what he did. He made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon all their spiritual authority and power to accuse you and by the power of the cross Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph he was not their prisoner they were his come on you got to get that in your spirit the devil's a loser he's a defeated foe Jesus destroyed him he destroyed the power of darkness he destroyed every work of the enemy by the blood of the cross every weapon 
has been stripped. Now you, <laughs> you got the authority in Jesus to enforce that triumph. How do you do that, Mike? Daily, every day of your life, put the devil to shame. How? By allowing Jesus to manifest in you and then through you. Come on. I'm alive forevermore and I hold the keys to hell and death. You got power. I said you got power. Matthew 28, 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. You need to know that tonight. How much power is living and working on the inside of you. You got to know that. That's why Paul prayed the prayer in Ephesians 1, verse 18. Here's what he said. If somebody wanted Paul to pray for him, Paul, what would he say? Here's what he would say. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. He's saying, open your eyes, grab a hold of this. When, then when you know the power that's working on the inside of you, right? John 1, 12, as many as received him, that's you. He gave power. He gave power. He didn't give him a name. He didn't give him a denomination. He didn't give them a title. No, he gave them power. I said power. You're a product of power. You come from the almighty, omnipotent God. And guess what? Like begets like. You're a power line on this earth. Come on, do you see yourself that way? You carry his power. Come on, you carry it. God, he immersed you with power. It's time to understand that. It's time to understand your power status. It's in you. Come on. If you're a born-again believer, that's everybody here. That's all of you. You got the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, living on the inside. His power is dwelling on the inside of you. How can your back hurt another day of your life? Life. Right now, let's stand up to your feet. Stand up to your feet. Come on, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every attack of that devil, you got power. I curse it in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Receive it. Come on, lift your hands. Receive it now. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, every muscle, every tissue, every tendon, it comes alive. Be healed and be whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it. It's done. It's finished. Laugh at the devil. Ha, ha, ha. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. <laughs> know that. Come on. I, I prophesy right now. Everyone here, no matter how great that problem seems to be, you're greater. Because the greater one lives in you. And today, I said tonight, the devil, he backs off for free in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. If you believe that, put your hands together and give Jesus. Come on. Give him praise. <laughs> Psalm 66, 3. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. <laughs> Let me take this a step, for, step further. What you have in you right now is greater than Moses had. Everyone says, oh, I want to be like Elijah. I want to be like Moses. No, what you had is greater than they had, right? Greater than Elijah had. Nobody in the Old Testament, they were endued with power, right? They, they had visitations. They had manifestations of power. They never had the indwelling that's in it that, that you do, amen? They never, <laughs> you're power carriers, right? God said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents if anything. If they drink anything poison, it won't hurt them. And by when they lay hands on the sick, what's going to happen? They shall recover. So move forward from tonight, right? The world, come on, the world's hurting out there. They're waiting for sons and daughters, right, to manifest who they are in Christ. God's power through you is the solution to this world. I said it again, God's power through you is the solution to this world. Absolute perfect peace in every area of your life is provided in the word of God. It's provided so stop programming yourself for ups and downs, for mountains and valleys. No, start exercising your divine authority. When you understand and you start to act in your divine authority, right, things begin to happen that'll change your destiny. Come on, I see destinies changing tonight in the mighty name. It's time. Get in the word of God. Collect the prophecies of the Bible and do 
warfare with them. Do it. Come on. When you look at the Bible, tell yourself, you know what? This is my book of destiny. This is my guide in life. And this book shows me where I'm going. Listen to me. The kingdom of God is living inside you, but you, you have to push to deliver it. You got to break it. Just like a pregnant woman does, right? When she goes into labor, your destiny is overdue. It's time to push. I said, push, ladies, push in Jesus' name. Push, come on. It's time. Tell dry bones to live. It's time to turn and face anything the devil's thrown in your direction, trying to harass you. Speak the way you want things, right? And watch, I promise you, as heaven gives them to you, amen? Don't let the enemy fool you into believing that nothing else matters but going to heaven, right? That's what everybody believes. No, you're not only going to heaven. You're going to radiate God's glory here on earth. Can you say amen? Amen. Come on, your life, <laughs> your life demonstrates God's glory. It, I mean, your life demonstrates that it's not by might, that it's not by power, but that's by his spirit. Come on, his spirit. He's going to shake the world through a crazy couple of people like us, right, who just decided, I believe the Bible. I've surrendered to his ways, and I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, just say, I, when you go home tonight, lay in bed and say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Whatever you need me to change, I'll do it. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Hey, I'm an open vessel. Lord, I trust you. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be who you want me to be. I promise you, when you risk it all to believe he can work through you, you're stepping into agreement with heaven. Come on. The only way to release his glory is through you, is to move by faith. Say, I got faith. Come on, I got faith. You got to know what he says is true, but then you got to be bold enough to step out, reach out. Why? So he can reach through you. So he can reach through you. He'll open your mouth. You'll speak his words. You'll touch the sick. You'll release his healing. You'll walk in the darkness and fill it with light. I prophesy in the name of Jesus everywhere you go, your light, his light in you is going to shine and break through the darkness of this area in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. He wants to do miracles through every single one of you. Come on, every single one of you. Come on. The responsibility to make it happen ain't yours. It's his. Just he needs you to release what's already on the inside of you. You're to reign as kings. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't say it. The Bible did. Amen. As a king reign because he's got authority to reign. Amen. He's got authority. You reign because you've been given authority. You reign by Christ Jesus. Come on, grab that tonight. God doesn't intend for the devil to dominate you. That thing that's bothering you and giving you a hard time, it can't stay. It can't stay. Why? You got immeasurable, unlimited greatness of God's power living and working in and through you. Tell the devil now, take your hands off of my health. Take your hands off of my finances. Take your hands off of my children. Tell them to stop and get lost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. As Romans 16, 20 says, the God of peace will swiftly pound Satan to a pulp under your feet. <laughs> I love that. Under your feet. Come on. Do you know Do you know that every demon here on earth knows that Jesus already defeated him? There's a difference between people, uh, between people who walk in the name and people who don't, okay? That there is. If a person thinks they're just going to try to cast out a demon and they don't know Jesus, right? they don't have a relationship with Jesus, they don't know the authority they carry in him, that demon ain't going nowhere, amen? He's not going nowhere. Luke 4, Jesus was in the synagogue preaching and a demon-possessed man screamed out. Luke 4, verse 33. Now in a synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon and he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What, what, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, said, be quiet and come out of him. He didn't ask him his name. No, he didn't say how long you've been there. He didn't say who else is there with you. No, he said, be quiet and come out in the mighty name of Jesus, right? Notice that, that, <laughs> notice this. That demon possessed man didn't cry out eh, 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 with, with that loud voice until Jesus got there. Think about that. I wonder how long was he there? How long was he there? He could have been there for years at that church. They could have all been singing their songs, saying their prayers, reading their scriptures, and the devil sat there and enjoyed it all. Had a latte with the rest of them. Didn't care, but what happened? When the power of God walked in that room, suddenly the devil got upset. 
<laughs> Think about it. Why? Because religious ceremony is no threat to the devil. Absolutely no threat. You can have regular church services all day long, and demon-possessed people can sit right through them, right beside you, not bothered at all, right? But when the glory of God is manifested, come on, and the Spirit of God is moving, the devil can't stand it. It can't stand it. Come on, you're going to walk out of these meetings, you're going to go back to your churches, and you're going to walk in, and people are going to flee in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm telling you, they can't handle the presence and the power of God. That They knew who he was, right? They knew the authority he carried. Come on, hallelujah. Not everybody heard this, so you get to hear it again, because it's funny. I said I was going to stop saying this testimony, because it kind of puts me down, but we were in the river. We were down in the river in Tampa, a big, huge church, and we're, we're sitting in the front, and, and, he's, and he's doing the healing school. All of a sudden, uh, <laughs> Two women and a guy in the back started manifesting. I'm talking manifesting, shaking, shivering, all sorts of stuff, screaming, yelling. And my pastor looks over at me and Dean, he's like, go take care of that. And I'm like, oh, man, right? I'm like, oh, there's a lot of people here. They're not going to see this, right? So we walk, so we go back, and I'm like, I'm like a little bit like, oh, man, here we go, here we go. And I go back, and I, and I come up to the first guy first, and I'm like, in the name of Jesus, out, right? And he just stops, right? I'm like, I'm like whew, hallelujah, I'm doing good, right? And, and I see D grab the, the other woman and take her outside in the back of the church, take her outside, and, and so I'm like, that's good. And I went to grab the other lady. Now, this other lady, she's mad. Manifest, and I mean, there's drool coming out of her mouth. She's swinging. She's hitting me. I got scratches on my face. And, and you know, you, you want to keep the people dignified, you know? So I'm, like, trying to pull her out slowly, and she's beating the heck out of me all the way out. Hallelujah. Beating me up. I'm, and I know everybody's watching, right, including my pastor, right? So I'm trying. I'm trying. But, wait, but the funny thing is, when I came out that door into the back, now, this is Florida. It's 100 degrees. It's muggy hot. And there's, like, a... a, a a, a thing over the top to, to, for shade, right? And I see D. I see her lay hands on this lady, and I see her just fall out, right? It's right into the grass outside without that cover, and the sun is just pounding on her, right? And I'm like, all right, praise God. And as I come around the corner, D gets done what she's doing, and she gets done. She lays around. She turns around and looks at us. And as soon as she looked at us, that, that lady that I'm getting beat up by, how live, she goes, I don't want to go in the sun. I don't want to fall in the sun. I don't want to... <laughs> soon it... This is what am I trying to say? I... <laughs> I wasn't affecting her, hallelujah, but as soon as she seen D, as soon as she seen that D knew who she was in Christ, as soon as D, she, she seen D's eyes, she knew she was getting cast out in the mighty name of Jesus, right? Come on. I know that makes me look horrible, but that was in the beginning of our walk. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I want to really stop doing that testimony, amen? But I'm trying to show you that's when that scripture came alive to me because it was the same thing. As soon as she made eye contact with her, that devil knew it was leaving. You have that same authority living on the inside of you right now. Every single one of you has the power of God, right? I mean, <laughs> that's when you find out if you were called and sent or you just went. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Luke 10, 19. Now you understand that I that I've imparted to you my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you. Overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing. How much things absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority and a lot of translations say power right dunamis dynamo explosive power but the word here is excusia excusia what's that mean it means delegated authority and because i don't have a better better example to use in this i'm going to use the same thing the little old lady the little old crossing guard ladies right for school I can't stand those little ladies, right? I got to pray. I have to. I wrote down on my card for forgiveness yesterday. No, I didn't. But, <laughs> but I mean, I'm telling you, the people will be like three blocks away, and she's like, "Stop!" And you got to stop, right? Now that lady, she's 90 years old. She's five foot one. 86 pounds, she, she she can't physically stop me from doing anything, amen? She can't physically stop me, but but she has delegated authority. I know if I cross her, I'm going, then the school board, then the police, oh, she's got authority. All you need to cast out demons is authority. All you need is authority. Repeat after me. I have authority over all the power of the devil. 
Come on, in Matthew 8, 5. 8, 5, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my young servant lies in bed paralyzed in terrible pain. Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. Now listen to this. I know this because I'm under the authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go or come and they come. And I say to my slaves, do this and they do it. Right? Jesus heard this, right? He turned around everybody said that's faith that's faith that's what he said and the young servant was healed at that very hour that centurion understood authority he said he recognized the authority that jesus carried when you understand your authority i've been given all authority over the devil you got to take that personal take that when you walk out of here i know that you got to get that deep down in your spirit you're not trying to get anointed to have authority you have the authority right now you got the name of jesus you have all authority now over all the power of the devil. When you speak just like the demons got to listen, can you say amen? Come on, do you know who you are? That's what tonight's about. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. John 1, 12, those who embraced him. That's you, right? You've all embraced him. Took a hold of his name. He gave authority to become children of God. Take a hold of his name. What's that mean, Mike? That means to, to believe everything he represents and then put into practice everything he taught you in the power of his name. Matthew 10, 8, continue to heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Acts 1, 8, you will receive what? power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses what's it mean to be a witness think about that come on you read these scriptures and we don't think it through he gave you power to be a witness a witness means to provide evidence of your job <laughs> is to provide evidence that jesus is alive and that he's doing today what he did back then right god does the world right now see god's power working through you does he see it no if not Start using your faith. Start acting on the word of God. Come on. And Paul said, right? I pray you will continuously experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives, come on, say my life, will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. Jesus is not here anymore, but his victory, the victory that he won, the authority that he carries, it's for us. It's for me. It's for you. Come on, if it's not for us, who's it? for if it's not for us who's it for us how long you stay in your dark times it's completely up to each and every one of you the bible says in jeremiah 17 5 this is what the lord says cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the lord they're like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future they will live in a barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land but bless hey this is for you blessed are those who trust in the lord and have made lord their hope and their confidence you they are trees like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water such trees again you are not bothered by heat or worried by long months of drought their leaves your leaves stay green and never stop producing fruit the lord's telling you right there you can enter into a life where you're never anxious that you never stop yielding fruit that you're always producing come on you decide you you can live a parched life. Unfortunately, most Christians are living a parched life, right? Where they're going through valleys and going through the desert. The reason is they don't know. But one more time, I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus, the last desert you went through is the last desert you're ever going to go through. The last lack you ever had is the last lack you're ever going to have. Come on. The last sickness, sorrow, and depression you had is the last sickness, sadness, and depression you're ever going to have in the mighty name of Jesus. The rest of your life is going to be joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. The rest of your life is going to be getting the work of the Lord done in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. By the grace <laughs> and the knowledge of God I see every one of you going from glory to glory to glory. Come on, this time next year, <laughs> you're going to be in a completely different situation. Why? You're planted by the rivers of living water. You will be fruitful 
all the days of your life. Come on, you just got to believe. Decide tonight, I believe the Bible. Lord, I believe this is for me. Lord, I believe this is for me right now. That, that's what faith is, you know. Uh, how many are saved? How many in here are saved? You know that you know that you're going to heaven. <laughs> you can wake up in a bad mood. You can get in an argument with your husband, kick the dog a little bit, right? And you still know you're saved, right? Right? No. But the same way I know I'm saved, it's got to be the same way I know I'm healed of the Lord. It's the same way that I know this sickness is illegal in my body. It's the same. I know this depression ain't mine. This infirmary ain't mine. This battle of the mind, it's not mine. Jesus didn't pay for me to carry. He paid for me to not carry. You know, people tell me, oh, I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, you're never going to see it until you believe it. Amen. You're never. Jesus said, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Amen. Without seeing. When you believe you receive your healing according to the word of God, you're going to see healing manifested in your body. You can't have Abraham's blessing with Thomas' faith. Amen. You can't. Come on. And a lot of times, pastors, unfortunately, they cheat people out of the benefits of redemption. They misinterpret God's will for you. But you have God God's word in front of you. You got his will in front of you. It, read it. You need healing? Don't accept that garbage when people say you got to suffer for God's glory. No, that's complete, total rubbish. Amen? That's garbage, right? Read the will. Take advantage of it. Claim the benefits. Use everything to every right declared in it. I pro All heaven stands ready to enforce every one of those covenant rights. Every one of them. Just be bold. Start claiming what's yours. Satan's a liar. The father of life. He loves blinding people to what your rights are. He don't want you to know what your redemptive benefits are, but Jesus said what? You shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Truth, come on, the word of God. Believe those promises now and receive everything he promised you. Healing is yours. Peace is yours. Joy is yours. And when you realize that, you re you're going to start fighting for what's yours. You're going to start fighting for what's yours. Come on. <laughs> if someone you knew passed away and they left you a will, and in that will said, hey, I'm leaving you a car, I'm leaving you a home, and I'm leaving you 10 million bucks, you'd be like, praise the Lord. First of all, amen. I got all this coming. But the day you go to collect what you belong, they, you walk up and they hand you the keys to the car and that's it and you're like okay that's cool thank you for the keys to the car but where's the keys to the house more importantly where's the the access to that 10 million bucks that's what i would say why because they're mine because i inherited them right you'd fight for it why because it's legally yours you know the same way you would fight for to get that 10 million dollars is the same way you got to start fighting for your health it's the same way you got to start fighting for your joy and your sound mind devil i'm a child of god healing is mine joy is mine Peace of Jesus bore it. I don't have to bear it. So body, talk to your body. Body, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin. Take back what's yours. Why? By the power that he already gave you. He already gave you. That's what Summerall said. Satan hopes you never find out. You're only as weak as you confess to be. You're only as they say. That's, that's his hope. That you don't know who you are. I mean, that's why you can't be timid and shy about these things. No, no. The righteous, the Bible says, are bold as a lion. You got to let the Holy Ghost rise up big on the inside of you. I'm asking you, how much does it take? How, how much of your health does he have to take from you? And she's saying, you know what? No, this sickness doesn't belong to me. This sickness can go straight back to hell where it came from and talk to your body. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Talk to it. Life and death or what? During the power of the tongue. Start speaking to your situation. Speak. You're a spirit. Your body don't run you. You get to a place where your spirit starts running the show. That's my goal here. Every single one of you, let your spirit start running. You're not your body. You live in a body, right? Your body's your house. When the lights go out, change the light bulb. Hallelujah. Change. The, you got the power. Use it. Use, you got the ability and the authority to change any circumstance, circumstance going on in your life. Don't try to believe. Decide to believe. You don't need your mind to believe you. Amen. My mind never believes me. Hallelujah. I just say the word. Hallelujah. Tell your mind to shut up. Tell your mind to get out of the way. Amen. Get out of the way. Hallelujah. I'm a believer. I believe regardless of what I see. I believe regardless of what I feel. Proverbs 30 verse 5. Every promise from the faithful God is pure and proves to be true. He's a wraparound shield of protection for all his lovers who run to hide in him. Hide the word in your heart and it always 
always produces. The enemy comes at you with symptoms of sickness. Stop crawling in the bed and whining, right? Oh, this has always happened to me. No, stamp your feet. No, say, no, glory to God. You know what? This body, it's off limits to you, Satan. I refuse you to allow you to put that foul thing on my body. Jesus already took it, so you might as well pack it up and go home now in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not always easy. I get that. You got to make an effort. Amen. You got to fight. You got to stand up and you got to fight the good fight of faith. But don't let the word, the word fight scare you. No, it's a fight you win. You win because Jesus gave you everything you need to win 2,000 years ago. Come on. He took your sin, gave you his righteousness. He took your weakness, gave you his strength. He took your sickness and gave you his health. He took every defeat and he gave you his victory in his place. We, what I want you all to get out of all this today. Know who you are in Christ. Know the authority you carry. You're an heir. I said you're an heir of the greatest exchange ever made. And I want to do one more point. The more you know who you are in Christ, the more insignificant that loser devil becomes to you. Amen? He becomes insignificant. When you realize he's under your feet, you're going to stop exalting him above your head all the time. Amen? No. Now that you know Every one of you, now that you know how weak he is, never again allow him to take advantage of you. I said never again. No, you take advantage of him. The devil's a puny punk. He's a weakling. He's defeated. He, <laughs> I decided a long time, I, I, I'm, I'm living as if the devil's dead. Amen? I'm living as if he's dead. I'm not going to complain about him. I'm not, he, he can't do anything to me. I run my ministry. He runs his. Can you say amen? Come on. I, <laughs> I don't know everything the enemy's doing to everybody here in your life right now. I don't. But the truth is God's word. Listen to me. God's word will keep you on top. It'll keep you on top, right? If you give it its right place in your life. What makes you an overcomer is what's written. Well, come on. <laughs> so it's time to open your mouth wide. It's time to send the devil where he belongs. The gospel truth is this. The devil is inferior to you. Any time, any place, anywhere. Come on. The devil's not going to determine your future. The devil's not going to determine what you can and can't do. Your future is between God and you. Come on. Everything we talked about tonight was from the word of God. Grab a hold of it. You've got to understand every single work of the devil around your life is forever canceled, blotted out of no effect. The Bible says this, Revelation 12, 8, and neither was there any room found anymore for him in heaven. He tried to go up there. No room found, right? And Ephesians 2, 6 says, you're seated there in heavenly places. Jesus raised you up, made you sit with him in heavenly places where no room can be found for the devil hallelujah that's saying where you are there's no room for the devil here's the verdict of all that satan you got no room where i'm seated you got no room in my home you got no room in my business you got no room in my body you got no room in my children wherever i am satan you've got no room for you light and darkness can't coexist and jesus said you are the light satan Satan cannot handle you because darkness can't handle the light. That fire, that fire of God is burning in you right now. The candle has been lit. It's time. I said it's time to let your light shine. I said let it shine. Go on, in your homes, in your health, in your finances, in your workplaces, everywhere you go in this lost, dark world, light fires in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, I said the battle is over. Raise your hands right here and say this to me. Come on, don't say this to me. Say this to Satan. Satan, I'm superior to you. From this day forward, as far as my destiny is concerned, you're irrelevant. I've seen the light. Enough is enough. I stand on my throne. And I curse everything you're doing. Satan, you ain't my problem. <laughs> we don't dwell in the same realm. I'm placed above you. And I believe God's report. <laughs> Satan, check this out. I know you're under my feet. Jesus placed you under my feet. That's where I belong. Come on, get excited. You're not my problem. You can't be my problem. 
I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above, far above you. So Satan, get lost. Hallelujah. You've reached the end of another episode of The Truth. For video testimonies of God's miraculous healing power, visit our website at fishministries.org. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know of upcoming content. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free.